Hey there, how's it going everybody? So today we're going to go over how to do CRUD operations on a Salesforce instance using Python. And we're going to be using a couple libraries. You may have heard of Pandas is the most popular library for manipulating data. And we're going to be using simple Salesforce to interact with the Salesforce API. Um, so I've made a couple assumptions here. One is that you're familiar with Salesforce and you already have an account. The second is that you are already somewhat competent as a programmer and you're familiar with virtual environments, Jupyter, uh, and some other tools that we're going to be using here. So to begin, I'm going to start off by creating a virtual environment in this folder here I have called Salesforce Sandbox, and we're going to install the packages that we need. So, pipenv install, notebook, pandas, and simple Salesforce. So we're gonna run that, and while we're waiting, uh, I'll take you through some other stuff that we're gonna need. So, just to get you familiar, this is what the Salesforce page looks like. Uh, we have a list of leads here, which I'm going to show you how to create, read, update, and delete them. Uh, they're basically just records in a database with a nice UI as shown here. But oftentimes, if you operate a Salesforce instance, you're going to have to clean them up because it can get quite messy, as especially as there's multiple data sources, so on and so forth. One thing you're going to need for this is you're going to need a username and password, obviously which you're going to need to log in. So this is what my username is. I'm not going to show you my password. And then for security token, you can get it by going to this little emoji, emojicon face here and going to settings. And then if you go to reset my security token and click reset, it will email that to you and you will get it. And then you can use that to access the API. So it looks like this all worked here. So I'm going to leave this open and we're going to go ahead and query the Salesforce database. So I'm going to go ahead and launch our virtual environment. And then we're going to go to Jupyter. And I love Jupyter as a tool to interact with Salesforce because it allows you to see what is happening in real time and uh, it makes it just much easier and faster to administer things or reassign accounts or anything of that nature that you may need to do. Uh, so we'll call this Salesforce. And we're going to start by importing some environment variables, which I have saved in this environment, just so that I don't have to reveal my password in the screen recording. Uh, but I assume that you have a username and a password. And then I'll also import the other packages that I'm going to need. So from import get env, then we're also going to import pandas as pd, and then we're going to import a class from simple salesforce. And then I'm going to go ahead and get those environment variables. We have SF user, SF pass, and then we have SF security token. Just to make sure that works, let's see. Okay, it looks like it pulled my username, so we're good. And now we're going to authenticate a with our Salesforce instance. So username equals SF user password equals SF pass and SF uh, security token equals this. And it looks like this worked. So we can go ahead and start interacting with the Salesforce API. So I'm going to start off by just running a simple query just to see what show you what happens. So let's start off with this query here. ID, name, email, from lead, limit, 
10. And this is SQL, Salesforce proprietary SQL language. It's almost exactly the same as SQL. So uh, result, except there are some strange nuances, which you'll see. So simple Salesforce has this query all uh, package and all you have to do is pass in a query. So we're gonna pass this in and see what the result is. It returns the data in this weird order dictionary format, which I don't really like, which is why I resorted to using pandas. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we can actually read the data in a human readable way. Uh, so I'll pass in the result here. And we need to, since all the data we want is within this records field, we're gonna use the get parameter and run that and we should have a nice data frame here so this is what you're going to get when you interact and query from the salesforce api so now what i want to do is show you how to actually query uh, for records so or sorry i'm going to show you how to create records so what we're going to do is create a couple new records so uh we'll call this list of records one thing I didn't mention is we're going to be using the Salesforce bulk API, which allows you to create things in bulk. So uh, when we run some of these Salesforce functions, they're going to have the word bulk in it. Um, and yeah, that's you'll, you'll see that coming in a sec. So we're going to create a couple leads. It allows you to do multiple operations at once. That's really the benefit of it. So first name, We'll call this person Bob. Uh, then we're going to need a last name. Now, if you ever worked with Salesforce before, you know some of these fields are required. And then we're going to go and give them the company. Bob. Bob's company. Oh, wait, that has an apostrophe. There we go. So that's the first record we're going to create. We'll create another one. Uh, put a comma in here. And we'll create a, uh, what's a common name? Jasmine. It's like not common at all, but Jasmine's company. Okay, so there's our list of records. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and insert these into the lead object. So to do this, we're gonna be using one of those bulk API functions. So you have to specify the object and specify the Salesforce command, which we're gonna insert. And we're gonna run this and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, it will let us know what the error is. Okay, so it looks like that worked. So if we were to go to our instance, we should see Bob and Jasmine in there. So just to refresh. So I see Jasmine and I see Bob. So uh, that is simple as it is. That's how you insert leads into Salesforce programmatically. So now what we're going to do is we're going to update them. We're going to give them an email because they don't have one. So uh, what we have to do is, first of all, let's query for them so we can get their IDs. Um, so I'm going to copy this query. And then I want their first name. I want their last name. And I want their email. And where company. And if you know SQL, this should be pretty easy for you to do. Uh, Bob's company, and then we got Jasmine's. Okay, so what we're going to do is run the SQL query, and then we're going to put it into a data frame. And then here, as you can see, we have their first name, last name, and a blank email because they don't have one. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create two emails. Uh, first of all, let's get rid of this column here. We don't need it. Uh, df equals df dot drop columns equals attributes. Get rid of that. And then we're going to give them a email using this pandas uh, data frame functionality. So uh, we'll 
debob first, so where id is equal to this. We're going to try to isolate that column. So assuming you know pandas, you should be familiar with the dot lock function. Um, and this is how we can isolate their email for Bob based on that ID. Uh, and we're going to set it to Bob at test.com. We'll do the same thing for Jasmine. We used to make sure we had to change that ID uh, to Jasmine's ID. And it looks like, did I get it? They look very similar. Oh yeah, I and J, so Jasmine. And now we have a data frame that's updated. Now what we have to do is just pass this back into Salesforce. So we could pass all these fields because it's going to basically just update the record with whatever is in this data frame. But just to keep it clean, we'll drop these two columns here. Uh, so uh, let's first name, last name, and df equals df dot drop, and then columns equals this. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this into a dictionary to dict records. And this is what we're going to pass into our update function. So I'll call this uh, list of records like we did up here, just to keep things consistent. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run our bulk update command to update the email. Like insert list of records, but we want update. We'll see if that works. Looks like that worked. So we're going to go back here. We should see Bob and Jasmine. So Bob now has an email, and Jasmine now has an email. So I've shown you how to read, I've shown you how to create, and now I'm going to show you how to delete. So first things first. I've decided I want to delete anyone with the last name Test. So Bob and Jasmine, fortunately, you have the last name Test, so we're going to have to delete you. So let's create some more cells here, get some space, and I'm going to write a query. Uh, in this case, we really just need their ID, um, but I will show you that uh, I'll just keep the last name in there for now. So. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's run this, and then we'll run this, and then see what it looks like. So, okay, so we have two people with the last name Test. We really only need the delete column for uh, people who were deleting. We only need the ID column, sorry. So I'm going to get rid of this. And then we're also going to drop that attributes column because we don't need that either. And then what we're going to do is move that into a list of records. And what we're going to do finally is run the delete bulk delete function from this Salesforce library. Salesforce bulk lead delete list of records. See if that works. Looks like it worked. So if we go back here, Bob and Jasmine should be gone. And they are, so we don't have any test leads in our database anymore. So hopefully this helps. Uh, there's some things you can do to add functions for some of these repeated actions that you're seeing here. Uh, like dropping the attributes column or converting the data frame to, to a records, uh, to a list of records. Uh, we're not going to cover that here. Uh, I just wanted to show you the basic functionality of how you can use Python and pandas to manipulate data. Uh, this stuff can become really useful if you're trying to reassign accounts to new reps or if you're trying to, you know, manipulate data en masse, if you're trying to, uh, you know, rename a bunch of columns or whatever you're trying to do. Uh, Pandas is very powerful for handling a large amount of data 
and it pairs very nicely with uh, the Salesforce API. So I'll leave it at that and I'll post this code and links so that you guys can see uh, how I did this. Um, if you want to take a look there. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, so thanks and have a great rest of your day.